it's Miss Mocha. I'm your spiritual therapist coming back from my spiritual therapy. Really, this is a dream analysis and a revelation. So I keep trying to do this video. It's just not coming out right. I'm trying to get every key thing but make it as short as possible and it keeps up keeps being so long. But anyway, let me get into it. Okay, so the dream I had was Friday the 13th. I dreamt that um, I was in some kind of building, I had a cart full of food, and I was trying to get away from this man, he was like this African man, he was had a bald spot, like bald in the top of his head, and that's all I could see, he was like not African American, but African American, but from Africa, and he was like slim, taller than me, and he was like coming after me or whatever, and so I was trying to get away from him, I pushed the basket on out the door, he didn't he couldn't come through the door okay and so I pushed it down to where my kids were at the car and they were putting the food in the trunk or whatever and as I'm walking down I see an ex pass by me and he wasn't like my kid's father or anything he was just another ex um, and then I saw spider webs and I saw one big spider web with a big spider in it like a spider waiting and then I woke up to a phone call from a job that I had applied to and then a text from my mother, okay? And so that was the dream and that's what happened after the dream. And then after I got the phone call and the text, tried to go back to sleep, I couldn't. And I got up to use the bathroom. I saw a spider run across the floor in the motel that we were in. So I was like, okay, I just had a dream about spiders. Now I see one, that's wild, but I ain't thinking nothing of it because I'm sleepy. So um, I use the bathroom, go back, try to lay down, I can't, so I get up, you know, and I go to get me a coffee at the gas station so I can get prepared to call the lady back, you know. And so I'm at the gas station making my coffee. This lady come in, she's talking to the cashiers, and she's talking about Halloween and how she can't wait, the decorations are fun. She was like, she has a big spider for decorations, so I'm like, man. This is the third spider that I done heard. This gotta be God talking. It's a message. He's using, you know, the spider animal to talk to me right now. So now I'm like, I know God speaks to us in three ways or speaks to us three different times. And so he spoke to me in a dream about a spider. He spoke to me by showing me a spider in real life. And he spoke to me by letting me hear about a spider. So I'm like, okay, what does this mean? what's going on so i took the whole day analyzing the dream and i even did videos but um it's not i don't think that was the correct message that i was getting i thought it was about work but um fast forward eight days later and i got a completely different message so remember the african guy in the dream and my ex in the dream not my kid's father but just the ex period the ex was um the cousin to the guy who sexually abused me when i was a teenager and the African man was just an African man trying to get me, okay? So, fast forward to um, about five days ago, a couple days after the 13th, so around the 15th or whatever, we're sitting in a grocery store parking lot and we don't have any money, can't get a room, can't eat, can't shower, can't do anything, we're there all day. And so I get to the point where I'm desperate because um, after talking to my mom, I can't really ask her for any more money. I already did, and she kind of, um, you know, wasn't feeling it, I thought. And so I um, had my daughter reach out to her father's father, so her grandfather, because my ex is already refusing to help. And so um, he's telling us to ask the grandfather, so that's what we do. And so she calls him, and she asks, you know, for money for us to eat and get a room and stuff, kind of saw our situation, we haven't talked to him in years, you know, but we're at the point where we're desperate, we're needing some kind of help, and so, um, you know, we're texting back and forth, and he was like lollygagging, giving us the run around, not really sure that he wants to do it or anything, pretending like he doesn't have it, blah, 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 and so he's like, okay, I'm gonna send it through MoneyGram to the store, you know, what's the address, he needs the address, he's real adamant, no problem, he was real adamant about needing the address, and me not even thinking anything of it, I give him the address, when only he needed the city and state, I gave him the full address, and so now he knows our location, and then we're still waiting, he's like, oh, I'm, 
out of town. I don't know if I'm getting back in time. I can't do it. And we're just like, we really need you. We really need your help. You're about the only one we got left who can help us. These kids are hungry. They don't have, you know, anywhere to go, blah, blah, blah. blah. And he's like, okay, I'll see what I can do. Time went on. He's still texting us back, but he's not helping. And he pretty much um, <laughs> sold us a dream and let it go. And so we had to end up just sitting there without eating or showering or shelter or anything which we did before so it was fine um then this man pulled up on me asking me if I needed a place to stay so I'm like yeah you know one and he's just like um well I knew, know a guy who's renting a four bedroom you know me and then there could be other people so basically trying to get me to rent with him and um some other people I'm just like no I'm not interested in that I have children and pet and all that I'm looking for something else like, okay, well, let me know. I'll be right here in the parking lot. Immediately, I thought of the dream because this man was an African man and he was bald headed. He was my color, slim, taller than me, just like the man in the dream. The only difference would be, oh goodness, only difference was that um, he didn't have one of the same clothes as the guy in the dream, but he was still African. He was still um, had the bald. And so it immediately reminded me of a dream. And then I got an easy feeling about the guy because he parked like close to us. And I'm thinking like, oh no. And then I remember the cart full of food. And I'm just like, oh no, we're at a grocery store. So that symbolizes that we were in a grocery store parking lot. So the dream and the cart full of food makes me think of the grocery store parking lot we were in. And so I'm like, no, this is the dream. The African man in my dream is trying to get me. Is this African man gonna try and get us while we're asleep? So I'm like, no, I can't stay here. I'm gonna go to another grocery store. So um, I end up leaving that parking lot, going to another parking lot. Um, across town so that he wouldn't be at the same location as us and um, immediately I thought that this was kind of funny because no one has ever approached us until I gave the, the man our address the, the, my ex's father our address okay so I go try to go to another location the car dies on me we're stranded at a gas station and so I get a jump and then I try to go back to the grocery store parking lot because we just couldn't make it anywhere and we better we were better off there. Maybe I had just got scared. Well no, nope, we couldn't even make it back there. I had to pull over in the parking lot where we are now. And so the next morning it's like I'm all out of options, I'm desperate, we're hungry, we're tired, we need shelter. So I just end up breaking down calling my mom. And so I told him what was going on and all this and you know we talk and she asked what can she help me with we got she gave us money for food we tried to fix the car by putting oil in it and that tapped her out of her money and so after that the kid's grandfather calls and he says that he can help us now okay so he's gonna send us money this time through Western Union. And so he didn't need the address. I just gave him the city and state like I knew. And so we left it at that. And then I started telling him what's wrong with the car. And he thinks that it could be transmission fluid issues. And I needed to go get transmission fluid. And so since the rest of the money that he had for transmission fluid, um, but I go walking around looking for it and of course I have a European car, the transition for it, they don't sell it, you have to special order it and so no one in this, you know, in the vicinity had the transmission for it that I needed for my car. So I get back to the location and I tell my ex's father like, um, cause I'm speaking with him directly, my ex is not involved and I told him that I can be involved with my ex. He does not, we don't do well, he likes to argue, he likes to get a cross up, I'm not doing that anymore, I can, I can only talk with him directly, cool. Um, so I tell him that, you know, what I researched, since we can't get the car anywhere, I'm going to have to have it towed to an auto shop, and that um, from there, you know, the tow is $102, the auto shop can do a $20 diagnostic and put the the um, fluid in for like $12 a quarter or whatever so it's going to be not so expensive okay cool but the my ex's father was like well instead of paying the $102 for a tow I'll just pay $160 for my AAA and then I can use it 
future for me too. I'm not thinking of nothing of it. Cool, I know you get unlimited toes with AAA. So even though he didn't put me on his AAA, my son, you know, has the same name as them. So he's like the third, so their name is all the same. So he could pretend, you know, to be him, put it in his name, whatever. It worked out. So he gets it towed up there. And come to find out, they do the diagnostic and they tell me that it's nothing that we thought. It's the battery and then it's the alternator. The alternator died and it killed the battery also. So it's like no one has the money to pay for that. So the car needs to come back to the location that it was at. So that's how he got the address again because he did AAA for us and he had the car towed from the spot that it was at up to the shop and then back to the spot from the shop. And so after that we sit there and we try to figure out what we're gonna do because no one has this money um and so it go like the next day it ends up he tells us that same day he's all tapped out um that was over 500 dollars. he can't help come get us he can't um bring the kids up he can't send for them or anything he's tapped out he's backing out he can't help no more Cool. I talked to my mom the next day. She tells us, you know, her and my niece, they don't have the cars, they don't have the money, they can't help us. You know, that's fine too. I moved, I asked God, because I didn't want my kids going up there anyway. But I asked God, if this is what you want, to send the kids back to Minnesota, then bless it. If not, then block it. And so when my mom got back, said she couldn't do it, and the, my ex father couldn't do it, and I knew my ex can't do it by himself, you know, so I don't even trust my ex to do it, period. But I knew it was a wrap, and I knew God was blocking it. So I just went on with, okay, the kids are going to stay with me. God's got a plan. I'm going to figure it out. We're going to get through it. And so we did. We used that little money that he gave us, got a room, you know, and then just been, you know, making it ever since. But now here comes my ex yesterday getting mad because he still wanted the kids to come to Minnesota. But I'm telling him that, you know, I know that God blocked it, so I'm, I'm blocking it now since no one can come get them. He wants to have some chicks pick them up or some cousins or whoever he could find to come down here or try to put them on, spend all that money to put them on a bus or whatever. That is none of the options was, is going to work. And I was trying to tell him that, of course, he wants to fight and argue, and I didn't. So I just let it go. And now he's threatening me since the, okay, so... Now he got to the point where he got mad and was threatening me. And so now he knows my location. So the father, so since the father, since I've been talking to his father, the father has um, given him my location. I know that because he sent me a screenshot showing exactly where the car is, showing um, that he knows even the cookie place that I posted because he watches my videos. And he's just, you know, spiteful and so he's now he's threatening me and threatening to do something to me it's going to be a problem if I don't let the kids come and so it immediately made me feel like the dream was telling me that I was getting ready to have harm done to me by that African man and I believe that his father and my ex and his father sent that African man to try to harm me or try to take the kids or harm me and the kids even harm my car maybe that that first night and then now that my ex that his father gave him my location for where the car is the second the second time now my ex is threatening to come and take the kids from me or have um you know his cousins or some females or whatever bring him down here and it's going to be a problem if I don't give him the kids or he's going to have the cops call on me send the cops over to have child protective services get involved have them try to take my kids from me uh, well not my son because he's 18 but my daughter from me and just you know being real aggressive and spiteful and threatening me and so it's all because his father gave him my location and I believe he gave him my location both times so I believe that's what the dream is trying to warn me that um, there would be some domestic violence or maybe even sexual violence if I would have stayed in that parking lot and so God protected us by having us move, change locations and having a car die so they wouldn't know where we were at and then I just fell into the trap of giving him the location again 
um, because I was trying to get it told in the AAA, he, that was the only way he was going to do it, by his own AAA. And so that's how he was able to get the address again, gave it to his son. Now his son is threatening to come down to us and, you know, do whatever. He's not a guy. He doesn't handle things in a respectable, godly manner. He's abusive. And so he's going to come and try to use force and abuse or whatever to get my daughter away from me. It's not like, you know, he really wants her. He's had his opportunities and chances to have her and it never worked out. God has always blocked it and took us away from them. And so, of course, he's not going to understand that because he's not listening to God. He is just wanting to destroy me any way that he's can, he can. So this is his opportunity. And like he said, it's going to be a problem if I don't give him my daughter. He's going to send the cops. He's going to send, you know, um, child protective services. Or he's going to come with his people and just take them. And so uh, right now I have to block him and block his father. And I won't be dealing with him no more about the issue. It's, it's dead. And that's God you know, answer my prayers, removing them from me, and so, um, the dream was a warning to that, and the spiders were a warning to, not really a warning, but like a heads up to be patient, that God's got it, that, um, you know, you set your intentions, you build your web, now you have to stay in it, like, like, it's almost the message is like, I'm the spider, now you got, I have to stay in my web, wherever he puts me, and he will bring my food to me. He will bring what's the food? The food is my abundance, my job, my income, my husband, my car, my everything, my home. Um, so it's, it's really him telling me, be patient one day at a time. And it's probably also telling me, because the spider talked, it did, it talked about a lot of things like being creative and creating things, talked about growth, it talked about life, death, and um, uh, rebirth. It talked about, uh, you know, the patience and all that. And so what I think God is uh, also trying to tell me is that that old life is dead and it's over with. And my new life is getting ready to begin. But I have to recognize who are, who's a dead weight in the, my life and cut them off. And so it's like he's showing me that right now these people, they weren't for me and the kids. They're trying to harm me. That's why he was so um, happy to have my location so that he could come and try to do something to me. Maybe even the kids too. I don't know. But, um, he, you know, it's, it gets to the point where it's unsafe for us to be around him. And so he doesn't know the location where we're at now because now we have a room. But he knows the location of the car. But I know I've been reading Psalm 91. I wanted to read it here, but I forgot the Bible inside. But I'm sure most people know what Psalm 91 verse is. It's the protection prayer. And I know angels are around us. I know God got us protected. I know that this man cannot hurt us anymore. Even if he does have the location, God already knows. He is in control. And he is not going to let anything happen to me in the kids. He never got us this far for um to just leave us and let us be in harm's way no he's gonna protect us trust me they will fall before me and my kids do so i'm not worried at all it's just it's so hard dealing with this and being in this situation but i just gotta keep the faith and stay prayed up and me and my kids to get through this but i just wanted to expose him because he's threatening me and this is serious at this point because he has my location they haven't had my location since i left chicago and that was in 2022 so now that he has my location he is going to try his damnedest to do anything to try to kill still destroy me maybe even the kids you know who knows in my car who knows what's what he's got planned that he's not right in the mind and so whatever he, he let anger and aggression take over him so much that he wants to just do anything to me because he can't have his way and so God has it under control so I'm not going to too much worry about it but I wanted to make this video because I know he watches and probably his family too and it's like I know what you guys are doing now I know what you're up to and yes I gave y'all the address but I, would, I didn't nearby think that you would be on anything but trying to harm me, but my dream lets me know that you are. My dream lets me know that y'all sent that African man to try to harm me probably when we fell asleep or something and that 
the you know the first parking lot and just by how you reacted I know that now you have my location you're going to try to come do something stupid and so God is going to block it he already is I trust in him and I know that me and the kids are going to be okay and that you won't get a hold of us even if you try to come down here you won't find us so I suggest you just stop just stop whatever plot you got going on against me and let it go so that's all I want to say. I have to expose the wickedness every time, just like the Bible says. So I'm not trying to put too much out there, but the dream was a warning and also a revelation, you know, to make sure that I'm staying patient and know that God's bringing everything I need to me and also let me know that these people were out to try to plot some type of harm against us. Um, and it's not going to happen. God says it's not going to happen because he got us protected. That's Psalm 91 prayer. So I'm probably going to post the whole prayer in the, the descriptions because it's real. And I love it because I know God is protecting us because this man is wicked. This family is wicked. And whoever else is riding with him is wicked if you're trying to come and do some harm to me when I ain't done anything and no one but take these kids so that they can have a better life. And although it doesn't look like a better life now, it is better than being abused and ridiculed and talked down on and trying to buy their love instead of actually being real support to them and loving to them. So that's all I wanted to say. This is my dream analysis and my revelation of what God told me using the spirit animal, the spider and how it helped me or how he protected me from harm and how he tried to show me you know that domestic violence or sexual violence was about to come on me again but he blocked it so thank you lord thanks for listening y'all